Hi guys, and welcome to another Big Man Gaming vlog. Uh, I know it's been like two weeks since I last talked to you guys. I've been fighting an eye infection of some kind. It's really weird. It's hard to explain. Um, when I went in to get the exam, my uh, eye doctor had asked me if I had looked directly at a welder's torch or a high concentrated UV light. I hadn't, so um, he said, well, I have some cornea damage, and... In the process of giving, getting that, my eye is trying to fix it, and then in doing so, it makes my cornea dry, which is then counterproductive, and then makes it worse, and somehow it started spreading to my left eye. I don't know. There's a big technical thing. I've been fighting that for about a week now. Um, it's getting better, uh, but I still got a couple more weeks on my medicine. That's why I kind of didn't do it last week, because I could barely see. I was doing you know one of these things where I'm had to focus with my left eye and it was just a big mess so anyway uh, quite a few updates um, game wise the PS4 launched and uh, launched sold a million units in 24 hours which is which is really good uh, congratulations to them um, I'm not a big Sony person anymore I haven't been since the PlayStation 2 but you know congrats to them um, there were some default default um, faulty excuse me, uh, PS4s that went out uh, where either they didn't work out of the box or they did for a while, but then they burnt out and then they wouldn't turn back on. Um, and for anybody that got those, that sucks and, I, and, and it, I, I hope you get it fixed. If there's any of you fanboys out there that, you know, are like, oh my god, PS4 is amazing and I nothing is better, and you got one of those, and you're an asshole, then whatever, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like that's what you deserve. Um, but for those that, that genuinely, you know, are looking at, you know, just having something, you know, for a gaming console, you know, I, I it, it sucks. And, you know, I hope it gets fixed. So, um... Also, World of Warcraft, um, BlizzCon was this not this last weekend, but the weekend before, and they had announced quite a few things. They announced um, Heroes of the Storm, which is, um, like, if you watch 2011's BlizzCon, they announced it as Blizzard Dota, uh, Dawn of the Ancients. It's um, now called Heroes of the Storm. Pretty much, it's they take um, their heroes, you know, like Arthas and Thrall and... Kerrigan and Nova, and they put them all into like one game, and it's kind of League of Legends style for any of you that have played that type of game. Um, then uh, Hearthstone is pretty much it's a, a World of Warcraft, you know, the trading card game, um, but they're doing it in digital now, and they're they're planning on scrapping um, the actual paper trading card game. So if you are looking for any of those. Um, hard to find cards or anything, I suggest doing it. You know, go out and do it and get them now while you can. Um, because, you know, if, if you if you play WoW and you want, um, you know, the, what is it, the tiger mount, the, the spectral tiger, um, or the, the, the rooster or whatever, I, I would suggest doing it and, and doing it now. Um, they previewed uh, Reaper of Souls for Diablo 3. Looks extremely good. You know, the update to the loot system and the fact that they're going to have what's called loot, loot runs or as they call them Nephilim Rifts. What happens is you'll fight a, a boss and um, or you could do like a bounty thing that they explained and and um, then once you get that you can open up this rift and go into it and it could be a dungeon I think they said from one to ten floors that you go through and you fight bosses and you get loot and the way it works is it's pretty cool because like the, the dungeons are all randomized and that includes the floor. So, like, you could be on the first floor and it could look like the cathedral that you start off in Act 1. It could be one of those. But then you go down to the next level and all of a sudden you're in a jungle area, you know, from, like, Act 2. Or you could be in, you know, one of the heavenly areas from Act 4. You know, so it, it jumps around, which is pretty cool. Then they're going to actually have it more Diablo 2 style in the fact that you know, with three Diablo three, it's always been you fight monsters, fight monsters. At the end, there's a, a boss, and you fight this boss in an arena. Now these bosses are spawning in the hallways or in rooms with monsters, like they did in Diablo two. So that's gonna be really, really cool. Um, there's a lot more stuff that they were going with it. the the new The new class, the Crusader, looks amazing. I'm definitely going to level one up. 
there's just there's just so much info on it that that um, if you want, I would suggest reading on it. And I think the BlizzCon videos are now archived, so that way you can watch some of them. I can't, I won't say all of them. I'm not going to guarantee, but you could watch some of them for sure. Um, then StarCraft Two, I was kind of disappointed they didn't preview uh, Legacy of the Void at all. They didn't really do much with their expansion. Um, I know with 2011, they're like, oh, here's Heart of the Swarm, and they explained like how the the campaign was going to work and how it was set up and it made me look forward to like I'm, I was like I can't wait for Heart of the Swarm I want it and and so I was kind of like oh, I wonder what Legacy of the Void is going to be like you know what kind of characters can we expect whatever and they didn't they they mainly had the tournaments for the like the world championship series or whatever that they had and I yeah, it's cool but I'm not I'm I was looking more for the expansion and they really didn't have anything which is kind of disappointing um but then World of Warcraft, Warlords of Draenor is going to be the expansion. We're actually going back to Draenor, but it's not Outland. Um, and there's a lot, a lot of stuff that goes with it, and I'm going to kind of break it down and run through as much as I can. Um, what is going to happen, story lore-wise, is that uh, Garrosh, instead of being... Um, he's at in Pandaria awaiting his trial... And instead of being executed or whatever, you know, that Thrall was going to do. By the way, spoilers if you haven't gone through Siege of Ogrimmar. Um, Th uh, Thrall was actually going to kill Garrosh. And then uh, Varian had stopped him. And Vol'jin is now the new war chief and what have you. But um, he's actually in Pandaria waiting trial. And there's a certain bronze drake um, that comes to him. And you... They said that it's uh, one you're going to be f that you should be familiar with on the Timeless Isle. Um, and what that Bronze Drake is going to do is pretty much he's giving Garrosh a DeLorean, <laughs> as the way I put it. They said like a golden ticket, but they're giving Gar he's giving Garrosh a, a DeLorean. He's like, here's the key to the DeLorean. It's got it's filled with plutonium. Have fun. So Garrosh is going to take this magical DeLorean and go back in time. I think they said about two months. It's either two months or two years. I know it's two something. Um, I want to say two months um, before they the orcs drink the demon blood of Manoroth, so that way they don't become the green skinned fell orcs. Uh, and the only one that does is Gul'dan, which makes him an outcast. So that means there's a lot of people still in play now. Grom is back. Uh, Duratan's back. Uh, Gul'dan's back. And uh, there, there's a bunch of other people that they mentioned that are back, and um, it's and the way and now we now people are like, well, wait, doesn't that screw up our timeline? Our timeline currently in in WoW um, is going to be fine. It's not going to be like um, they they went back in time. Now they screwed up the timeline. We we have to go back and fix it. It's not about, the best way they put it is, and they made the same reference, we don't have to go back and make sure our fathers, our father and mother kiss and we have to play the guitar at the school dance. Um, it's, our timeline is currently fine. Everything still happened in our timeline. It's more of like, here's our timeline, then Garrosh is here, he goes back, breaks off a new timeline, and now it's co connecting back with our timeline. And um, so what's happening in the present, now this is after Miss. A lot of people are confused and like, oh, we got to go back in time. We are not going back in time. Garrosh is the one going back in time. Then he sets up this iron horde, because in the background this whole time that everything is happening, the iron horde is being built. And so then they're going to come through a new dark portal, which is actually red instead of green. And from what BlizzCon said, they're still figuring out a way so that way, like, level 60s can still go in to Outland and, and not have it be the red one so that way it's Draenor and then you're in level 90 to 100 content. By the way, that's also you're leveling to 100. Um, and then also then if you are max level, you can go back to Outland to do old raids and do stuff. They're working on a process about that, so don't worry about, like, oh, crap, Outland's gone now for us. So anyway, um, what's going to happen is then, as level ninety, the um, I know the alliance and the horde both are taking the fight to Draenor. It's not like they're waiting; they're going to Draenor to stop Garrosh, and 
um, the all the orcs. Um, and what Garrosh is trying to do is he's trying to get all the leaders from all the clans and make the Iron Horde. Which is going to be interesting because you're going to have the regular horde, which is going to have green orcs, some brown orcs, whatever, and then you're going to have the iron horde, um, which we know we had a, a multiple different versions of versions of the horde because we've had, you know, the the fell horde when you do the hellfire ramparts, or you have the um, black rock spire. You know, they're like, oh, we're the true horde. So we we know there's different iterations of the horde we've dealt with, um, but. We're going to have to go through, and I know, like, the the Horde, they said, is going to start, and they're going to have to deal with, like, the Frostwolf clan, which is going to have Diratan, which is cool, which is Thrall's father, and they said there was going to be a whole thing of, like, Thrall has to do deal with his, like, he's going to learn who his family is, and he gets all that cool stuff, and then I guess Garage is going to, you know, have, you know, since he's got daddy issues, is going to work out stuff with Grom, um... And then the Alliance, actually, their capital, which I think is cool, is the Black Rock Temple. Um, no, I'm sorry, not the Black Te Black Rock Temple. Black Temple um, from Burning Crusade. That actually was a city at one point, and that's actually going to be our capital city. Uh, the Horde's, like, way on the other side of the map. It's not like we're Miss, where we're, like, we're right there. It's going to be we're actually continents apart. Um, which I think is is kind of cool and, and kind of about time. I know for people that are in low pop servers, one way or the other, it kind of got ridiculous. But um, so anyway, um, and they were talking about how you know like Cadgar is going to be there and a bunch of other people are going to be there for you know just all, and it looks amazing. Like when I saw Miss at the 2011 BlizzCon, I was like. Really, this is what you're doing. You're implementing Pandaria, which I know was a race. And then there was that whole thing about like, oh, the Pandarian was a race before Kung Fu Panda came out. And yeah, I know. I know Pandaria was a race. I know there was Pandarians because I played Warcraft three. I played the other Warcrafts, and it's just the fact that I'm like, this is this is the direction you're taking us. Our new race is Pandaren, and you get a monk, and then you're implementing Pokemon. But I ended up liking it anyways. I love Miss. I actually have come into Miss, and I've I've I like to, um, or as my buddy Matt uh, likes to say, uh, I've made Miss my bitch. Um, but this one is exciting me. I mean, you get uh, garrisons, um, which are going to be cool. Where you take a plot of land, and it's going to be instance, kind of like the farm was in in Miss, and you build it up, and you can get different buildings and. You, from there, you can get followers, and those followers will actually do, you know, menial, like, some of them will mine for you. So, like, if, you, if you're if you mine, you know, if one of your things is mining, he'll actually mine for you. I mean, you only get so much a day, but then you can also go into that mine and take the nodes that'll reset, you know, every day. And um, all the way up into having a group of them run a raid for you. Um, and, and it's not working like, oh, hey, I'm going to take these ten guys, send them on a raid, and then they're raiding for me and I get my raid gear. It's You do get gear and money and stuff like that, but it's not as good as if you did do it yourself. And it may not necessarily be a piece that's for you, because you can also gear up your followers, which I think is cool. Um, but it's, it's really hard to explain out the gate. Um... But I'll do my best. It's pretty much like you build your buildings, then you get an inn. And you're in and um, also doing some side quests. You'll get these followers, these NPCs, which you can rename. So I could name it, you know, Butts McGee. And the character's name is going to be Butts McGee. And then if anybody decides, like, oh, I've got these people in my party, um, and I invite them to my, my garrison, they're going to see Butts McGee. And that's the cool thing, too, is like... <clears throat> It, since it's instance, let's say I've got 40 people in my raid group, all 40 of those people then can come to my garrison and check it out. Um, but anyway, once you get these followers, they're going to obviously have a certain level themselves, and they they have certain skill sets that they're good at, and so then you have like a quest list, you know, of different things you can do, of, of quests, dungeons, raids whatever and so then you um you know like there's a slot where you put the character and you're like okay this is the character i want to do then you pull up the quest and it's like compared to this character how well is he going to do the quest and so obviously if it's green it's going to be easy for him you know yellow is going to be just regular and then you know orange to red is going to be hard for him you know like us 
and and so then the more people obviously let's say there's a red one that's that's tough for him you could send two or three more people with him to do this quest then they do it together and it makes it easier and then the same thing goes for dungeons and raids and it looks fantastic and I'm, I'm super excited for it because that's that's something that then I could be like oh I need extra money or I need you know I'm hoping for a piece of loot go do this for me you know and and quests they say take a, takes a couple hours a dungeon can take a couple hours to, to a couple days and then raids um, for what I saw was four to seven days and it works offline too so if you log off it's like okay I've got these people do, still doing this in the background um, and when it comes to gear, they said they're getting rid of, like, hit and expertise, um, just because they're tired of, and, and they're getting rid of reforging, um, because they said gearing shouldn't be a chore, and it shouldn't be a punishment, because you gear up, and, um, then you have to spend, you know, 10,000 gold to regem and reforge and all this other crap, so they're getting rid of, you know, hit and expertise, I think they said they're also, um, getting rid of a few other stuff. Stats, I'm not quite sure, but I know they're getting rid of those, which are cool. Um, the other thing they're doing with um, the way it works is now the items are going to be um, pretty much multi-stat, which means is like instead of like okay, here's a plate piece that drops and it's for a tank, and so no, like if if nobody's a tank, you know, it it's really not useful for anybody. But now what it's going to be, it's just it's going to be a plate piece. And so then let's say you have a warrior, a DK, and a paladin, and your paladin's a healer, your warrior's a tank, and your, and your DK is just DPS. All three of them can roll, roll need on this uh, piece then, and then the stats will adjust according to what they are. So this paladin could win it and get the, the intellect and the spirit he needs for, for healing, or... If the DK gets it or the tank gets it, they'll get what they need. They'll get the strength and then like the the dodge they need off of it. Um, and then the other cool thing is, let's say then that Paladin's a healer, but he wants to do a rat off spec. He can then change to his rat off spec. That piece is going to change with him. He doesn't have to get another set of gear. That piece changes with him. The stats will change. So it'll give him the strength and and stamina rather than having the intellect and the spirit on it which i think is really cool um because i don't know how many times where i've been in a group and we're like we get a drop on a raid and it's like oh this is you know for a mage and we don't have a mage or this is for an ellie shaman and we don't have an ellie shaman now it's if there's a male piece shamans and hunters will roll on it um and who and it'll change based on their stat which i think is cool um, they're all now also now changing the rating, um, so that way it, it's all flex. So like um, the heroic and the normal is ten to twenty five man, and it's flex. And um, so that way, if we have a guild of fifteen people that are, are wanting to raid, we don't have to have those five sit on the bench anymore. It's all fifteen of us can go and, and it'll adjust accordingly. And they're going to fine tune the the flex mode too because. Now it's right now, like, if you go into flex, you have 14 people, it's set up a certain way. If you get that 15th person, it becomes a lot more difficult, um, depending on what it is. So they're going to fine-tune it more. Um, I know the LFR is going to have a flex fine-tune, um, just because, you know, if you're in LFR and all of a sudden a tank decides to leave, you got to sit around like, well, we're waiting for another tank. Now it's actually going to adjust down so that way it knows you only have one tank. You only have... The five healers you you know you only have so many dps which i think is going to be cool and there's so much more i can talk about it and i could probably until i'm blue in the face but um there's so many other cool features that they're going to do that i can't talk about because i don't have enough time i might do a part two here in a couple days um but yeah that's that's pretty much what it is um i'm going to leave with um unfortunately I was going to do an Xbox One um, kind of unboxing video uh, Thursday night, Friday morning, and unfortunately, there's some circumstances beyond my control where um, somebody that I hold very dear to my heart needed money, and um, a couple months back, and at the time, the only money I had was on my Xbox, and I was going to pull it off of there. Um, just a little bit to give to them and then 
um, you know, just keep re-adding money. Well, the way the policy is at GameStop is that in order to take off money, I had to cancel the pre-order, and in order and to cancel the pre-order, um, which means I wouldn't get one. Well, now it's worked out um, where I could possibly get one, but I haven't gotten the money back yet. Um, which is fine. I don't hold the hold the person responsible. Um, you know, because like I said, I hold them very dear to my heart, and it's just I'm a little bit disappointed because it's the first time in a long time that I haven't gotten a launch console um and you know i worked very hard to to try and get it and it makes me feel that, that old saying no good deed goes unpunished so you know i'm i'm hoping that i'll have one probably before december but it probably won't be one of the launch ones so i won't get any of the special stuff with it so um, i won't be able to do an unboxing video for that and i apologize but hopefully next week um, or later, sometime this week, I'll make a part two to explain more about the World of Warcraft um, expansion. Because I'm really excited for it, and it looks really cool. So, I will uh, hopefully talk to you guys next week, and uh, remember to keep gaming and keep your head up.